Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today we are discussing Palm Springs 2020, directed by Max uh, Barbaco, um, starring Andy Samberg, and we have Christina, Christine uh, Miliotti. And I don't want to say anybody else that is in this episode, or sorry, that anybody else that is in this um, that you might not already know who's in there because I actually found it a little bit of an Easter egg or a surprise not knowing who was in this. And so, um, yes, this movie originally was premiered at Sundance uh, Film Festival at uh, the end of January 2020, um, released by Neon and uh, digitally streamed able to be streamed on Hulu, at least in the States. I'm not sure about internationally. But um, yeah, I think that uh, this is a lot of fun of uh, a movie. It's what you would call a romp, like a little rom-com romp. And it's got a twist on it that I don't exactly think I want to get into yet. uh, But I will say I enjoyed it. For anybody that wants to just go into this movie uh kind of blind totally understand i think you'll enjoy it rom-com with andy samberg and if you know those combinations then if you think you'll like that then you'll probably like this because i think this is one of the better productions that andy samberg has been involved in not that he hasn't been involved in very you know uh tons of stuff brooklyn nine nine lonely island guy uh what is it uh saturday night live he's done tons of stuff what a hot rod in 07 was one of my favorite movies um i've heard uh was it that's my boy pop star never stop stopping i've heard that was actually really good um he's a really talented guy actually uh he's 42 now and i feel like i've been following him every bit for since hot rod it's 15 years yeah he's he's been he's been in the game for a while um and I do feel like this movie is taking advantage of his um, talents in that in, in that perspective. He feels much more of uh, a confident comedian in this. And so with saying that, let's go into the plot of the movie. Um, this follows two strangers who meet at a Palm Springs wedding only to get stuck in a sort of a spoiler alert time loop. And so you find this out all in the first 10 minutes of the movie, I believe. Uh, you know, you, you find out that Andy Samberg has been living in this time loop. Um, and this is about uh, the introduction of Christine Miliotti's character into the time loop. And so um, with saying that, I think it looks good, act good, direct good, written good everything good no i'm just kidding no i think it's overall a really solid production when it comes down to um the confidence that it has and i feel that the writing in it also is served well by this um by the cast as well um let me see if i can get the uh notes up real quick all right so the positive things that i found out uh i found uh, about palm springs were um it's a cute fun romp the editing is what really is intriguing from a filmmaker standpoint i'm just like trying to figure out the actual time loop scenario and how the editing is trying to teach us um you know where we are in in the spectrum i guess um this 80s synth music who is this uh the editor andrew dinkler and matt friedman i feel like i've heard of that matt, matt friedman oh he was on farewell the the farewell um and what do we have else let me see this music matthew compton i i've never heard this guy before but i enjoyed the hell out of the synthy style music that they had um so um at times i would say the writing was just a little bit uh underserved on the character of andy samberg and that was strictly just in certain parts it's uh 
kind of more of a, a me than you type thing. Like, I'm not sure if the maybe the movie said this and I just didn't see this or didn't hear it or something like that. But overall, um, I really enjoyed my time watching it. I think it's uh, a good rom-com for, you know, couples that have had to go through this um, COVID crisis and stuff like that. The uh, fact is a lot of us are spending a lot of time with each other. And so this movie is a big mirror up to... Um, uh, quote unquote society about you know is uh, are we spending the right time with the people that we really um, we really care about and you know taking advantage of um, of the time that we have with these people and really uh, um, you know not looking at this pandemic as a hundred percent of a, a negative when it comes down to telling everybody, that it's okay that you have that someone special you're spending time with and and kind of understanding the the certain someone now and don't say that i said that the, the pandemic was a positive because it's not what i said you better better take that back if anybody tries to warp what i'm saying absolutely not i'm saying you gotta look for the silver lining that is within this pandemic and i know that this movie was created well in advance of the pandemic but it feels like they knew that we were going to be stuck in this time loop with um our possibly significant other or nobody else um you know it's uh very well possible people are out there just by themselves and um that uh, for better or for worse if those people want to be that way then hopefully they wanted to be that way but uh this movie might be more of a reflection on uh, some people that m may or may not enjoy uh, the solidarity during this pandemic. So let's um, let's hop into spoilers real quick for uh, Palm Springs. We're going to talk about this 90 minute movie, five million dollar budget. Um, five million sounds pretty low, actually. I, I feel like this is a. It is kind of a bottle film where it, it takes place a lot only in one one locale. But for the most part, I thought it was, you know, pretty, pretty impressive for a five million dollar budget. Um, given the range, I did feel like a couple times I was like, oh, it's clearly CG, but still. Um, let's hop into the plot for Palm Springs. So, um. On November 9th in Palm Springs, Niles wakes up to his wakes up next to his girlfriend Misty on the wedding day of Tala and Abe. At the reception, he delivers an impromptu speech, much to the relief of Tala's sister. Sarah in the drunk, unprepared maid of honor, Niles and Sarah bond, and after discovering Misty cheating on Niles, are about to have sex in the desert while Sorry, when Niles is abruptly shot in the shoulder with an arrow by a mysterious man. This mysterious man will be revealed in a second. Wounded, he crawls towards a mysterious light in a nearby cave, warning Sarah not to follow. Concerned for Niles, Sarah follows him and is sucked into the vortex within the cave. So, this is the, the kicker. This is the big kicker. I was like... This feels like the third act of a movie, which is why I was very surprised that this was happening so soon. I mean, we see Sarah acknowledge that Niles knows what's going on. He's like dancing around power. He's like, oh, it's cool, it's cool. He's like oh, don't want to get hit by that. Oh, let me, let me scoop a drink. You know, like he's doing all these crazy things like he's lived this day before. And I totally understand um the filmmakers reasoning for doing all of that now obviously because he has done it all the time um it, you know at first we're in her shoes at first although the perspective is changing throughout the entire movie i feel like sometimes we're in his perspective and sometimes we're in hers um even to the way that the movie begins i think it begins with the goat doesn't it doesn't it begin with the goat um experiencing the earthquake or something like that and like disappearing or something i don't remember exactly but um let me see 
Sarah wakes up and is startled to discover that it is November 9th again. She confronts Niles, who explains that she has become stuck in the same time loop as him. Um, that would be horrifying. At first, you're like, oh, wow, this seems like fun. But then when you lay out the cataclysmic events that are happening through what's going on in this time loop, it sounds absolutely horrifying. Don't put me in a time loop. I don't want to be in a time loop. I don't want to live forever like that damn song's trying to get everybody. Anyone who to live forever. No, no, no. No one wants to do that. That's After watching this movie, I think that very much you don't want to do that. <laughs> so it's like... You, being stuck in one place all the time the the random rules that they're talking about like uh that niles knows that happened throughout the day the the earthquake the fact that jk simmons is uh, uh lives like a couple hundred miles away and he's just really pissed because he basically he was dragged into the time loop as well it's a very natural reasoning of why uh jk simmons would be pissed like he can't he, 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 they talk later about how he's not going to be able to experience life anymore and this is all because of uh andy sandberg so uh sarah wakes up and is startled to discover that it's november 9th again she confronts niles who explains that she's becoming stuck in the same time loop as him sarah unsuccessfully attempts many escape methods such as driving back to austin attempting to act of uh selfish selfishness selfish self Lessness and committing suicide uh niles and sarah spend many days together often relaxing by the pool of a nearby home whose occupants are away on vacation niles reveals that the man who shot him is named roy a man from irvine uh whom niles also trapped in the time loop after he and roy met at a wedding and did drugs together niles explains to sarah that roy blames him for being trapped in the time loop and occasionally comes to palm springs to hunt him for revenge so when it comes to time loops and stuff like that i do feel like there is this leap of logic that you have to do it's just like all right just think about the time loop and don't think about else because anything else because if you start thinking about the small details like if roy was met at the wedding why wasn't Roy in the wedding or why wasn't he there daily at the wedding? You know, it, it says that Roy wakes up, I guess, at home in Irvine or something like that, which is hilarious, which is he's always trying to hunt Niles. But it's like a, this is very much a dark comedy in ways that I was not expecting that I think is going to appeal to more couples than the average, quote unquote, rom com because of these crazy uh crazy ways they're trying to commit suicide and the the crazy things that the uh, niles and sarah do together it's a lot more uh it, it feels like you're vicariously living through this couple even though it's kind of an absolute nightmare <laughs> um okay so let me see so niles and they spend a lot of time together they kind of get close um, yeah, why is Roy not at the wedding? I kind of, I didn't understand if they met at the wedding. Why is he not always there? He wakes up in Irvine for some reason. Doesn't, still doesn't make sense to me. Um, Niles explains to Sarah that Roy blames him for being trapped in a time loop and occasionally comes to Palm Springs to hunt him for revenge. Funny, but it also is like, wait, why is he not at the, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. After many loops, Niles and Sarah camp out in the desert where they consume magic mushrooms and eventually have sex. The next day it is revealed that Sarah has been waking up up in abe's room having spent the night of november 8th with him and he advises her to leave before she is seen um a guilt-ridden sarah re uh, refuses to talk to niles about their previous night expressing that everything they do is meaningless they are pulled over by a police officer who turns out to be roy sarah rams into roy with the police car and badly injuring him um this was, I was another time this movie is unexpectedly violent <laughs> in some parts like this is intense as fuck um um and it, it's kind of that hot rod humor of just the almost ragdoll effect um but yeah let me see what we got um pull over by roy sarah rams into roy with the police car badly injuring him uh, after an argument niles admits that he had sex with sarah numerous times before entering the time loop hmm hmm 
this is a this is where it's a little problematic i think um something that he had lied about before a disgusted sarah runs in front of oncoming of an oncoming truck killing herself and restarting the day so i actually didn't catch that they had sex multiple times that makes me a little bit more disgusted with this guy i I do have hmm, mixed feelings about the time loop sex scenario. You know what I'm thinking? The more I think about it, it feels a little slimy because I'm um, okay. So think about it this way. Imagine having a conversation with somebody and so that other person is in the time loop and they have 10 conversations with you and you are only having one conversation with them but they know everything you're thinking or everything that you're going to say because they've probably had that conversation with you multiple times so they know exactly the right and wrong things to say you could really fuck with somebody you could Not even, okay, don't even think of a, about a, a sex angle, just from an angle that, a sex angle, not, don't even look at it from the sex perspective. Look at it from the perspective of just knowing somebody. I could literally, let's just say I was stuck in a time loop and... I'm replaying my day. I could go to the same, let's just say I go to the gym. I could go to that gym and I could have a conversation with that uh, a person over there multiple times. And they would only have memory of us having one conversation or, or, or that one day of conversation. However, I've had days, weeks, months to take mental notes into understanding who these people are, who this person is. And the more I think about it, it is just really fucked up. Like you can, like you could theoretically figure out an entire person's life with as much as they're willing to tell you. I mean, obviously it's, it's done from a, a comedy standpoint in this, but I think there's one point where, uh, Niles is running to get like, uh, let me see that he's, he's trying to get a dirt bike or something from some dude and he tells him he tells that dude he's like uh i i know i i know that you have feelings for some random lady and um you know bum fuck nowhere this is her name and it's like okay it's like andy sandberg from the future but like what else does he know about that guy that he's been you know shooting the shit with literally so anyways that, that just kind of like popped in my head i was like I don't think that that is, uh, that's good, especially because she doesn't remember. It's the fact that she doesn't remember that is really disgusting, I think. Okay, so, um, after the next reset, Niall spends his days unsuccessfully searching for Sarah. He smells Sarah's perfume on Abe's pillow and realizes that Sarah and Abe had sex that night before the wedding. I love how that's not immediately revealed either, uh, on the plot side. Um, it's like, wait whose bed is she in <laughs> so um yeah he confronts abe during the wedding and a uh, fight break out between niles and abe niles uh travels to intervene to talk to roy who has given up on hunting niles after sarah hitting him with the car caused him to to be kept awake in the in agony in the icu um yeah that's also a terrifying thing when they say that the pain's very real and the fact is uh you know you won't you'll die a slow death and shit like that it's like Eep. um roy explains that he lives in the perfect day forever with his loving family but will never get to see his children grow up which is like the saddest thing roy says that they will never speak again and niles asks roy to murder him one last time so he can reset another darkly comedic but also sweet scene um, meanwhile, Sarah confronts Abe over their affair and both express their regret and remorse. 
Sarah then resolves to escape their time loop, spending many days in a diner studying quantum physics and general, rel and general relativ relativity, um, talking with professors and finally coming up to a solution. She tests her theory by sending by sending a goat into the cave with explosives. In the next reset, the goat has disappeared, which I believe is what happens at the beginning of the series, uh, of the movie. Um, Sarah wakes up Niles and tells him she believes she knows how to escape the time loop by blowing themselves up in the cave before they restart the day. Niles admits he loves Sarah, but he wants to stay in the time loop with her forever. Um, no. <laughs> uh, she leaves him in the room alone and is frustrated, and a frustrated Niles breaks up with Misty. Um, Sarah attends the wedding, gives a heartfelt speech for Talia, makes a phone call and goes to the cave with explosives, drinking alone in a bar. Niles has a change of heart, decides to leave with her and rushes to the cave, professing he would rather die with her than remain in a, in a loop alone. Sarah, uh, reciprocates her his feelings and they kiss while she presses the detonator niles and sarah wake up again uh, lounging in the vacant pool um when the homeowners show up revealing it is november 10th and the plan worked in the mid-credit scene oh i didn't get to see the mid-credit scene but I don't, I'm just going to Roy approaches Niles at the wedding, asking about Sarah's plan to escape the loop from her phone call. Um, when Niles does not recognize Roy, he realizes the plan has worked and smiles. But also, does that mean that they're in different multiverses or something? Oh, I, I, I don't have time. Nobody has time for that. No, we can't do that. No, don't have time for all that. But anyways, Besides the problematic parts about this movie, I'd probably give it about a 7 out of 10. It was a fun rom-com that mm, I don't want to... Damn it. I, but before I made this, I was really enjoying this movie and not thinking about the problematic aspects. But that really changes things for me a little bit. Um, you know, going on the Groundhog Day formula, it's like... Um, I don't know. It, it, it was a lot of... Uh, it was a lot of fun, I'd say. But anyways, thank you for listening, watching Lugadaw Podcast. Um, let me see. Oh, Neon and Hulu reportedly paid $17.5 for the film. Uh, not bad. I kind of feel like this would have been great on Netflix as well. I wonder why they, they chose not to opt into it. But anyways, thank you for listening, watching Lugadaw Podcast. Be sure to rate, share, subscribe. Lugadaw Podcast, five stars five stars five five grand theft auto five stars <laughs> um and uh yeah follow thumbs up what is it subscribe do the rate do all the good stuff be sure to check out the additional videos we have podcasts uh mastered we have them on youtube we got the early stuff on patreon youtube we get it live on twitch we get all all the good stuff when you need them um let me know how I can improve the podcast. Let me know if you enjoyed Palm Springs. Let me know if you enjoyed the review. Thank you and take it easy.